Welcome to Behave Yourself, the podcast that aims to bring the science of human behavior and how you can apply it to your own life and become the happiest, healthiest, and most successful version of you. We're two behavior analysts with backgrounds in personal training and nutrition who struggled in the past with confidence, weight loss, breaking promises to ourselves, and constantly trying the quick fixes. We bring the science and show you how to apply it confidently and consistently towards your own goals and how to actually create a lifestyle change. Behavior analysis is the science of human behavior, and we all engage in behaviors that either move us towards the direction of our goals or hold us back from living the life we desire. I'm one of your hosts, Emily McRae. And I'm your other host, Joe Wesley. Hello. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Not great. I mean, I, I always end up in a better mood after we've kind of worked and stuff before we start recording. So I always end up in a better place. But this week has been brutally hard. And I've still managed to behave myself with my vitamins, which we said on the last episode, I was not tracking those anymore. I was just doing it. They were out. Um, And so there's one day where I missed because I can see that there's an extra, I was going to say an extra serving, an extra dose of vitamins in the two, in the little shot glasses. So only one morning, it wasn't even a full day. It was a morning that I missed it. And that was the day I was running late. So that was a good win for me this week, but overall it's been a struggle of a week and we'll get more into that for sure. Yeah. How have you been me- Similar. I think we were talking about it before we came on and this week, I think for everyone, for some reason worldwide, everyone seems to have hit a bit mm-hmm. of a wall and this week's been really hard. And I guess you could say I could pick out things that I have behaved myself well with. I've still eaten well. I've still eaten loads of veggies, loads of protein eaten well I still taken my vitamins I still been for a daily walk and a workout have I been fine honestly no and we were going to be doing our next podcast we had a plan for a different topic and we've decided to throw it away and the next episode which incidentally we're recording later today after this one we're going to go into how we're actually doing and talk about some real life stuff because it's hard and we are in I don't know where you guys are we are in week I don't know week three of our third lockdown and we're not doing well yeah we're not even in a lockdown but we've got (laughs) I mean we're going through other things in our our country too right now of politics and stuff. But in general, I think this week has been really challenging for everyone. I don't know what what this week has been or done, but it's been a challenge for a lot of people. Yeah. And I think well, I've talked about before my hatred and challenge with journaling. And it's been an active choice for me this week that I do not want to journal and I will not journal. <laughs> and that's mm. definitely, I think it could have helped if I had, I think I would have cried more and I think I probably needed to cry more, but I feel like we're already talking about next. next I topic. know. <laughs> let's not, let's go into this topic, but yeah, it, all in all, I'm not going to say, how are you behaving yourself? I'm not going to say I'm fine. I am not fine, but we'll talk mm-hmm. more about that next time. Right. So today we're going to talk, uh, last week we talked about the functions of food, which I loved. And this week is Emily's bag, which is the functions of movement. So mm-hmm. I'm thrilled that we get to hear more about that. My little shoulder shrug excitement, if you're watching <laughs> on YouTube. So this is really fun because I've seen these play out in so many clients and on social media. So we've gone over the four functions. We've got social or attention, tangible, automatic, and escape or avoidance. So that's your review of your four functions. And again, there's going to be so many overlaps. A lot of behaviors are maintained by multiple functions. And you're going to see that a lot, especially in food and movement. And especially with the society that we've lived in is a lot of it really comes back to social So starting with social, because that's going to be a nice overarching level, we're looking at, so why do we work out? Why do we move? Maybe it's to spend more time with a friend and go for a walk with them, or it's to, you go to the gym and you get to see your gym people. And I mean, for me, I always, I know the people that come into our gym and getting to say hi to them. It's also social in the sense of you may gain access to social reinforcement 
based on your aesthetics. So societally, I don't fully agree, but you may gain more attention from somebody, either from peers or from people that you're interested in romantically or intimately based on your body aesthetics. You, that that's just the general <laughs> way that we are as a society right now. And it's not that I agree with it. It's just where the truth in lies that a lot of social reinforcement comes from body aesthetics. Uh, I feel like I've been quite good at keeping my feminist fires down during this mm-hmm. podcast, but I think we could do a whole one on this oh. in particular with women because it's getting more common, mm-hmm. I think, with men having their bodies commented on, but particularly for women. And yeah. talking about social reinforcement for workouts, I think there's also a huge amount of social punishment in terms of workouts mm-hmm. and like people going into the gym and certainly people in bigger bodies going into the gym, being them ridiculed or laughed at or criticized. And like everybody, every person's body needs to exercise. And I Mm -hmm. am ashamed that other humans do that to people. Yeah. And that's, that's really, it's why I love the gym that I work at. It's an all women's gym and it just provides a sense of comfort. But the fact that women don't, feel as comfortable in a gym with men is also a problem. And I'm sure, again, we could go into this, but it's to see women in our gym that, and I've, I've met them, I've had consults with them. I train them that are just not comfortable, even in that space of what do I look like? There's mirrors all around that feedback of really seeing everything in a different light and the lighting and it's really challenging that social punishment and then to not know what you're doing or think that everyone else knows what they're doing. And then you feel like you don't, it can be really punishing and not actually want to go. I was just reading a post on another Instagram fitness page and they got super criticized for their form and everything. And this is, it becomes this punishing thing of people don't want to go because they don't want other people criticizing their form or and just, I, I just want you to go and try. Like that's, that's the first step, you know, but it gets really highly punished. So that was a good point to bring up. If you are in that situation, I would put some really loud music on, on your headphones, try mm-hmm. to ignore everyone else, particularly loud music, maybe rap music and pretend <laughs> you're that rapper and get your best retching, re- resting, you know, what face on. Sorry, mom, I'll explain that to you another time. <laughs> and just go in there and do it and ignore everyone else. You're doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I've talked about this. I have a client. She's getting ready to go back to school and going back into a gym that is not just women. And we talked about it. You're going to go in. You're going to set up that squat rack and you're going to do your workout because you know that you can set this up, that these are your workouts. And it really does not matter what anyone else is thinking or saying or doing because you are focusing on your own workouts. So we're working on it. Sorry, I interrupted you and went off on a tangent. Please continue. But I think it's great, you know, and it does it does play into the reasons why we do and why we don't work out. And that, and I have some of that in my list of there, I've found multiple reasons why clients will cancel sessions because of certain functions of movement. Uh, so lots of social reasons why we work out. Tangible kind of comes into it. We want to gain access to the muscle increase, which it all folds into some automatic as well. It's this weird overlap, especially in movement, but we may want to gain access to that visual sensation of seeing our muscle pump. So when you work out, all the blood flow goes to that muscle. So a lot in the biceps, you'll see flex Friday goes into the biceps and then you get that pump. And that may be reinforcing because you're accessing that muscle increase. Mm -hmm. Competitions, races, events, if you want to gain access to that first place title, again, social comes into this. You're going to see that a lot of these are going to overlap, Um, but you may want to win first place. I don't know that I've ever wanted to win a race, but I'm not competitive. So that's not typically (laughs) the reason why, Mm -hmm. but you could also be working out to, if you're in a challenge and maybe you win a prize. So we just had at our gym, a holiday hustle and members who 
basically racked up a certain number of points for their workouts, got access to free personal training sessions or massages, discount codes to restaurants. So they were able to gain access to those free rewards. One of them was a full year free membership to the gym. So that was pretty, pretty motivating for a lot of our members, I'm sure. I definitely, I've had to stop in the last few weeks because of the situation that we're in in Britain, but my daily walks are 50-50 for a walk to get movement in, but also for tangible, I walk to our shop to pick up a new vegetable and some like not nowadays because COVID, but um, I would only pick up say one thing from the shop each day um, Mm -hmm. purely because I knew that then the next day I'd have to go for another walk to pick up a bunch of bananas and the next day I'd go for a walk, but it's not, I enjoy going to the shop to peruse all the different lovely vegetables. We all know how much I love food. (laughs) I like going into a, like a grocery shop to see all the different vegetables. And so that's part of my walk is to get the tangible item to then bring home with me. Yeah. You could walk to get some coffee. I used to do that all in like the deep quarantine lockdown days. That was what I would do my daily walks. I would go get a coffee and enjoy it on my walk. And it can be something like that to get access to your food or drink or mail a letter, walk to the mailbox. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So some automatic functions, endorphins, runner's high. That is like number one. I know the people who they don't feel like they've had a workout unless they're sweating, breathing heavy, out of breath, laying on the floor, just outright exhausted. Uh, It's that endorphins, that runner's high that makes you feel really good. And sometimes it's hard because that doesn't come until the end and typically. And so when we don't want to work out, that's not as strong as we need it to be to get us to start working out. But that's where you're like, oh, I really like, I never really want to work out, but I'm really happy I did in the end. That's where that's coming from because you're really not, that endorphin release is coming a little bit later on. You're not getting that immediately. When you first start working out, you're still hunched over, miserable, like, okay, one foot in front of the other. And then you start to, those endorphins start to release and it becomes more reinforcing and fun to do. Again, I'm going to distract you completely. Is there a formula for that? Is there like a a heart rate that you have to get to? Or I don't know, is there a point where suddenly endorphins are known to be released? I'm sure there is. I bet we could find some specific data on that. I've actually never thought about that, but I'd be curious to find out what... What's the minimum I can do to get the runner's high? To get the good stuff. What do I do? Well, I wonder too, if it is different between people and like people who do yoga really love that. And like, like they just really enjoy yoga and that's very calming. And maybe it's, I, but I don't know. I actually now want to go and look it up, but I'm going to hold off and do it after mm-hmm. we record. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure we'll come back to it. Um, but also automatic, that internal reinforcement, those basic health benefits. You're reducing your risk of cardiovascular disease. You're reducing your diabetes levels. You're increasing bone density, increasing energy levels, improving your sleep. So those are all things that are going to come along with exercising and reasons why we exercise. Any others you want to toss in there? I really like that I can. I'm mid thirties, but I can, I'm more flexible than most people half my age. Like I can touch my toes without bending my legs. Like a delivery man will say to my husband, Oh, you better take this one. It's really heavy. And he laughs at them and says, she's got it. Don't worry. Like, I like that. I'm yeah. strong. I like that. I just, I feel better within my body now than I did when I was a teenager. So yes, all of yeah. those. And a lot of, a lot of clients will come in and they say, well, you know, why do you want to work out? And really it's, it's toning. It's that definition in the muscles, which leads into confidence, which leads into them being okay, wearing a a sleeveless shirt, um, and being confident wearing those shirts. But then that comes into the social. So you can see how they all start to play into one another, but increasing muscle tone and feeling strong. I love lifting heavy because I love feeling strong. I don't do it a ton because of triathlon training, but it's, it's fun. It feels good. And it feels good to, if somebody drops off something heavy, you're like, Nope, I got it. I can do it. And it's, it's empowering. And I guess also the feeling good within exercising to feel good within my body, that my body is 
for more than just looking good. I think coming from where I've come from of being bigger, there was certainly a point where I'd lost weight and had still, and still do of course, but they're paler, loads of stretch marks, maybe slightly looser skin. And even as a, like a 21 year old, I would I was never going to have the body of my friends who hadn't been bigger because they hadn't gone through the process of losing weight. They wouldn't have the baggy skin or the stretch marks. But then exercise made my body something else. It wasn't just aesthetic. It was something that could do some pretty awesome stuff with weights and running up a mountain and run a marathon and all sorts. So that made me feel good in different ways. Yeah, I think that's it's a really good point because so many people start out with aesthetics, which is... It, it, positive and negative. It's got, you know, both sides of the coin, but then realizing that inner strength and enjoying that time working out. And it's not, well, I'm working out just to get to this body image goal or just working out to get to this weight. It's working out for your health, for feeling strong, for just the daily release. It's mental health. Um, that was one I had and I don't, maybe it went off my screen, but many people come to the gym for mental health reasons and to just release those endorphins and do it to get away from, this is going into the escape avoidance, but to get away from the screen of zoom, like that's, that's become such a motivating reason why people are now coming to the gym because they just need to get away from the computer and get away from that seated, excuse me, seated position of at the computer all day long now. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So leading into escape or avoidance, uh, I, many people, so this is, this goes both ways. So why do we exercising as a form of escape? You may be coming to the gym to get away from your screen or to get away from, not from your house or your family in a, in a negative way, but you just need that mental break. A lot of the women that come are just It can like, be totally to get away from your family. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like not in a, in a mean way, but you just need yeah. that time to yourself. And it's, it's women only, they can come and just be. And I think I've talked about this in the past of a woman who was here, the gym for a few hours. And I was like, I mean, not that that's a negative thing, but just she was always there for several hours, but it was a time for her to be away because she's got some really intensive caretaking. And so that's, that's her time. That's where she reads uninterrupted, like go for it, you know? And so it serves different purposes, but that's her escape is her serenity and her place. Uh, maybe you avoid your, uh, avoiding going to work. So you come to the gym in the morning and um, kind of push off or delay going into work, but it also may help stimulate your energy for work as well and give you that, that space to be able to work out and that focus of you're not dreading it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the things with escape or avoidance with not wanting to work out is I've had clients cancel sessions And we've finally gotten to the root of the problem of they're avoiding the workouts because doing lunges may be eliciting pain in their knees or their joints. And so then they're not working out and avoiding movement altogether when we can figure out modifications and alternatives, but really finding out why they're canceling a whole session versus just saying, hey, this is what's causing this and communicating but realizing why you may be avoiding certain exercises or certain types of movement, if it's bringing about pain, that's definitely going to be a deterrent. Or if it's bringing some negative social attention, then you're going to avoid that situation. Um, Group exercise classes can be very scary for some people to go into if they feel like they don't know what they're doing, if they're just not sure, or they're not ready to go in by themselves, they, you know, may avoid going to do that. I worked with a client. We just worked on endurance to get through a class because she wouldn't go because she wasn't sure if she could endure through the whole group exercise class. And we worked on a, it's okay to take breaks in a group exercise class. Like it's, it's a, it's a group format, but you're your own individual person and you can take a break and take a breath and have some water, but realizing that everyone's there to learn. And we've talked about this in the past of people don't always know what they're doing. They may look like they know what they're doing, but, um, going in and just giving it a try because that is the, the group format is nice because you do have somebody helping you, but a lot of people avoid it due to concerns of social, social interactions and not knowing 
exactly what to do. Yeah. What else did I miss? Um, I had some great ones when I was at school of how to escape or avoid PE. Do you call them PE lessons, physical activity lessons? Mm -hmm. Um, I think I had my period when I was a teenager, four weeks of every month to try and escape or avoid PE. I would hide in the changing rooms. I would try and pretend that I was ill, that I'd forgotten my PE wear. So there were lots of different ways of avoiding. Mm. Um, I'm not saying it's right, but I know that a lot of people and certainly clients and certainly me in the past have worked out to escape or avoid negative thoughts about overeating the day before, Mm -hmm. which is a whole other podcast, I think. Absolutely. But very, very prevalent. I think to uh, escaping or avoiding it by the use of I don't have time and just saying, oh, I don't have time. I can't do it. Mm. I just don't have time. Or not doing anything at all just because they don't like a certain format. Uh, I just had a friend reach out and she said she liked my five minutes post on Instagram of just do five minutes. And she's been doing five minute dance parties with herself oh, nice. in her apartment <laughs> and and she, you know like again we've talked about this this time is really really challenging she's like I just don't have the motivation to like do strength or lift or hit or anything like that but put on some good music and have a dance party and then she's like sometimes it does kind of lead into me wanting to do a small strength workout or a 15 minute hit but five minutes of just dance it out like put on some good music and dance that's movement like it doesn't, if, if going to the gym and focusing on a lift is just not in your mental capacity or your emotional capacity right now, just go, go have a dance party. So there's different forms and functions of movement or just go for a walk. And that still is movement. Yeah. For me, sometimes escaping, uh, when I'm not ready to deal with negative thoughts, lifting heavy weights because you have to as you say focus so have you have to you have to be completely concentrating on what you're doing where your back is where your hips are placed how they're tilted where your feet are how you're holding the weight there's no room in my head for those negative thoughts so sometimes Mm -hmm. having some weightlifting time is escaping from the things I don't want to think about which is also not healthy I'm aware but it's an escape and avoidance yeah and I think and it's also it can be a time where you're it's not as much escaping, not wanting to think about it, but just quieting your mind and having that ability to just focus on that. That's what skiing is for me because I'm terrified of falling. So I'm so focused on skiing well and not falling that I can't think about anything else except for staying upright on my skis. (laughs) I've never been skiing in my life. It's awesome. I haven't gone in like two years because our winters have just been awful, but I want to go again. Um, And then another one I thought of was escaping or avoiding ill health. So um, Mm -hmm. I know that for me, this is a big one. Ill health in later years certainly runs in my family with things like osteoarthritis and um, like uh, bowel disease and Mm -hmm. exercise has been very much shown to prevent both of those. So I work out fairly well. I was going to say obsessively. I don't. Five days a week to try and in the long term avoid that. Yeah, that's a huge one because I know a lot of people who um, kind of want to be like be physically and acting younger than they are and being in much better health than they've seen their parents in and setting themselves up to be a very active person later in life. Yeah. And like we, I've not been made a secret to the fact that one day my other half and I would like to have kids. And I am going to be an older mum. Like I need to be healthy, not only for like the kids themselves, but giving birth is a marathon. Like yeah. it's a it's a physical activity. You mm. want to be fit to be able to get through it and do it. Yeah. One day, maybe. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. So I think that's all I've got. Me too. Lots of functions, lots of reasons why we do or don't work out. So. And there's not really a right function or a wrong function. It's just the functions. And it's, if you're figuring out, well, why, if you're saying I don't have motivation, okay, well, what, what is the reasons maybe why you're avoiding it versus not having the motivation if there's, or there's not a tangible thing that you're trying to get to setting that tangible goal. Maybe you work towards getting a new pair of shoes. If you run X amount of miles in the month, you get a new pair of sneakers, something like that. 
Yeah, what was it? Because I used to hate exercise so much. What was it that started? I think it was probably the social reinforcement that first got me started. And then what made me consistent Mm -hmm. was taking videos of my workouts to post on Instagram. And then I knew that if I didn't work out, I wouldn't have a video to post on Instagram. And Mm. the perceived judgment of other people Mm -hmm. was what kept me consistent. And now it's just, I don't even think about it and I don't post it half the time anyway. Yeah, I... I very much avoided working out. I walked into the gym freshman year, panicked because I didn't know what I was doing and thought everybody was watching me because I went to like a super athletic sports school and I was not, I was a dancer. I didn't ever go to a gym. And so then I panicked and walked out and didn't go back in to like four years later with a friend for a handful of times before I graduated and then started learning and building up and then Look at you now. Gym. And now I'm a trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? And there's still, and that's the thing still, there's still things within the gym that I don't fully know or like that I'm not fully fluent with. And so that's okay too. If like, there are things I don't know how to do. And then I learned from other people and that's, that's the process of it. Like you're never, coaches have coaches, trainers have trainers. It's not you know, you're not just like the know-it-all person or you're absolutely comfortable with everything in the gym all the time. So, Mm. but I avoided it for several years. (laughs) Nice. Okay. So, um, if people want to find us, they can find me on Instagram at the behavior lady. They can find Emily on Instagram at emily.a.mcrae and mcrae is M-A-C-R-A-E. Or you can find our Instagram at behave yourself pod. (laughs) <laughs> saw that hesitation yeah you can also email us at behaveyourselfpod at gmail.com or you can find um, us on facebook we set up a facebook group now where we post uh, weekly information weekly challenges at the moment we've just finished a week about baseline data and we're just about to start a week in fact this is happening in the past we'll have just finished <laughs> a week I think on antecedent and environmental manipulations mm. goodness knows what we'll be doing in the future but I'm sure it's fun and very informative and wonderful great. so come and join us there and it's a really nice community of very supportive lovely people so head on over and join us mm-hmm. yeah and we also learned that different reviews in the UK versus the US are shown so I can only see US podcast reviews and Joe can only see UK podcast reviews. So we are much more aware of that now, but thank you to those who are leaving reviews for us because we really appreciate it. And so we're not quite at the 10 yet to pull the name mm-hmm. out of the hat, but as soon as we are, I promise you, we'll let you know. Yes. Um, a quick disclaimer, we are both behavior analysts and qualified in our respective fields, but this podcast is for education and information sharing only and shouldn't be taken as personal, medical or behavioral advice or services. Awesome. All right. See you guys next time when we get very real. Yeah, I'm going to cry. Goodbye. I know, me too. Bye. <laughs>